how to add or remove a subsequence from a level sequence with C++ in Unreal. And actually, subsequence are pretty similar to the shots that we did in the previous video, so you can refer to that one if you want to have more information, but today I think we're going to try to go a little bit faster, so let's get to it. And as usual, here we are in a completely empty header files except the four functions we're going to create today. But on top of that, we also have two forward declarations right here. We have the U-level sequence and also the U-movie scene some track. The U-level sequence is the class of the sub sequence that we're going to add inside the level sequence and the U movie scene subtrack is the class of the track. The subsequence track is a U movie scene subtrack. So this is the class of the track, this is the class of the subsequence, and now we're going to take a look at the function. So I'm going to scroll a little bit down right here. And the first function is the get subsequence track from level sequence. That function is simply going to look into the level sequence to find the subsequence track. And since there's only one subsequence track at a time inside the level sequence, it's going to be super simple. We just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and as output this function is going to be able to give us the track that is inside the level sequence uh, the u movie scene subtrack which is the track that contains all the different subsequences so good that's it for the first function now we have the add subsequence track in level sequence so that function super simple super straightforward is just going to add a new subsequence track inside the level sequence and since there's only one we just have to feed it the path of the level sequence we want to add the track in and as output is going to give you the track that was just added inside the level sequence super easy super super simple. And then we have the next function, which is the opposite, the remove subsequence track from level sequence. That one's super simple also. We just have to fit the path of the level sequence that contains a subsequence track, and we're just going to remove it. And on top of those three functions, we have a fourth function, a function to assign a sequence to a subsequent track. So the link sequence to subsequent track. That function is going to take a few parameters. It's going to take first the level sequence path of the sequence in which we want to link the subsequence, and then the subsequence that we want to link to the track, so the U-level sequence right here, and finally the start and end frame of that sequence. So we'll be able to decide where we want to place the subsequence inside the track and where the section should end. Good. So that's it for the header file, actually. Now it's time to jump in the CPP, and here we're going to start with the includes as usual, and today we're going to need three includes. We need the level sequence and the movie scenes, obviously, because we're going to modify both of those, and we also need the movie scene subtrack, which, as I said, is the class of the subsequence track. So so these three includes are inside two modules, so the level sequence module and the movie scene module. So let's go make sure that both of those are inside the build.cs file. So here I have my level sequence right here, and I also have my movie scene right there. So good, I have the two modules that I need inside my build.cs file. If you don't, well, add them. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. And now we can go back in the CPP file to focus on the first function. So the get subsequence track from level sequence. And as I said, there's only one subsequence track at a time inside the level sequence. So that's going to be super simple. We just have to first uh, load the level sequence, obviously. So I'm going to use a static load object using the path that I receive as input to load my level sequence. If the level sequence is not valid, well, I cannot look into it to try to find the subsequence track because, well, the level sequence doesn't exist. So I cannot really look into that one. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to return right away in the case that the level sequence is invalid. But if the level sequence is valid, now I can simply look into it. So I'm going to look into the level sequence and look inside the movie scene that is inside the level sequence to find the track. The track that I'm looking for is the U movie scene subtrack, which is the track of the subsequences that's going to give you the subsequence track, which is the track that I want to return as output. So that's pretty good. But before returning it, I'm just going to check to see if it is valid just to return a little bit more information to my user. So if the subsequence track is not equal to null, it means that the track is valid and it was a success. So good, I was able to find the track inside my level sequence. But in any case, I'm just going to return my track at the end because that's what we wanted to do. We just wanted to retrieve the track from the level sequence and that's exactly what we did. So perfect. Now we're gonna go see the second function, the function that adds a subsequent track inside a level sequence. So for that one we're gonna start by calling the first function because we want to make sure that the track doesn't already exist inside the level sequence because we cannot have more than one subsequent track at a time. So I'm just going to call the get subsequence track from level sequence feeding it the path of my level sequence and as output we should receive the subsequence track. If that track is valid well I'm just going to return right away because I don't want to add the second subsequence track inside the level sequence. Just one track is good enough. So if the track is not equal to null, I'm just going to return right away saying that I'm not able to add a new track because the track already exists. I'm also going to return the track right here just because, well, I have the track, so why not just returning it in the case that you want to use it. But anyway, now that we know that the track doesn't exist inside the level sequence quite yet, it's time to add it. And that's what we're going to do right here. First step is to load the level sequence once again, because we want to modify it. So let's load the level sequence. So static load object, level sequence path, 
not give you the level sequence. If the level sequence is not valid, I cannot add a new track inside it. So I'm just going to make sure that my level sequence is valid right here. And if it's not, well, I'm just going to return right away. But if it's valid, then I can finally add my track inside the level sequence. And that's super simple. We just have to tell the movie scene that is inside the level sequence to add a new track. The class of the track is obviously the new movie scene some track. And that's going to create the new track for you and set it inside that little variable right here. Then I'm just going to say that it was a success because I was able to create my track inside my level sequence. And I'm also going to return the track in the case that you want to use it somewhere else. So good. That's it for the add subsequence track in level sequence. Now it's time to remove a subsequence track from a level sequence. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down here. And to remove a subsequence track from the level sequence, we have to make sure that the subsequence track already exists inside the level sequence. Otherwise, we cannot remove it. So I'm just going to also call the function get subsequence track from level sequence, feeding it the path of the level sequence. And as output is going to give you the track that is inside the level sequence. If the track is equal to null, well, I cannot remove it because, well, it's not there. So I'm just going to return right away. And the job is done because the track doesn't exist. But if the track exists, well, we have to remove it. So I'm just going to load my level sequence once again. And then I can simply ask the movie scene that is inside the level sequence to remove my track. And the track is obviously the track that I just found inside the level sequence because that's the one we want to remove. So level sequence, movie scene, remove track, remove that track right here. And that's it. Now we can see that it was a success. I was able to remove the track from my level sequence. And that's about it for the functions that control the tracks that is inside the level sequence. Now it's time for the last function, the function that links a sequence to a subsequence track. That one is a little bit more complicated and a little bit more interesting also. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here. And for the function to link a sequence to a subsequence track, we're going to start by checking if the sequence that I receive as input is valid because we cannot link a sequence that is not valid, obviously. So if my sequence is equal to null, I'm just going to return right away because I don't want to add a section inside my level sequence for that sequence because, well, the sequence is not valid. But if the sequence is valid, now we can add it to the track. And to be able to do that, well, we need the track. So I'm just going to retrieve the track from my level sequence. So get subsequence track from level sequence. Same thing as before. It's going to give you the subsequence track, uh, track that I'm going to make sure that it is valid because if the track is not there, I cannot add my sequence to that track because, well, it's not there. But in the case that it's valid, so the subsequence track is valid and also the sequence is valid. Now we can link them both together. So to do that, I'm going to need the level sequence. So I'm going to load my level sequence right here using static load object as before. And that's going to give you the level sequence. And we're going to use that level sequence to calculate the ticks per frame because we want to know where we want to place the sequence inside the track. So do we want to place it at the beginning, at the end, in the middle? And that something we have to calculate using the ticks per frame. And by that, I mean the quantity of ticks there are per frame in the level sequence, because the level sequence doesn't work in frame. It works in ticks. I already explained that a few times in the previous videos. But in short, the level sequence works in ticks. And what we receive as input is frames. So we have to convert the frames into ticks uh, to be able to feed them properly to the level sequence. So here, what I'm doing is simply getting the amount of ticks there are per frame. So this little math right here is going to calculate how many ticks there are per frame in the level sequence and that's going to give you a little value right here this value will be able to multiply it by the start frame and end frame to convert them to ticks number instead of frame number so good now that we have this value calculated we can finally add the section inside the track so onto the subsequent track we are simply going to add the sequence that's going to add the sequence section inside the track so add sequence uh, feeding it the sequence we want to add so the sequence we receive as input then we have to say where we want that section to start in the track so this is where I'm using my start frame multiplied by the ticks per frame to determine where I want my section to start in the track. So that's going to give you the frame number where you want to start the section in your track. And finally, the last parameter we have to feed to that function is the length of the section. So how many ticks you want that section to last in the level sequence. In our case, we only have the start frame and end frame. So I'm going to calculate the difference between those and then multiply that by the ticks per frame. That's going to give you the duration in ticks for that section. So you have a sequence, you're adding it inside your track. So in your track, you're adding a sequence. That sequence is right here. That sequence is going to start at that tick right here. And it's going to last that amount of ticks that you have right there. And as output, that function is just going to give you the section that was just created inside the level sequence. A section that I'm going to check to see if it's valid or not, just to give a bit more information to the user to tell him if we were able to create the section inside the level sequence or not. And that's about it for the functions we had to code today. So now it's time to jump in a little to see if it works.
So here I am in Unreal in a pretty empty level except that little wire right here that we're going to use to see and test if the subsequence work because we're going to add all these three subsequence inside the level sequence, the level sequence that I have right here, which is the one that is currently open. We're going to add all these three subsequences inside them and to see if it works, they have all different animations for my warrior and adding them inside the main level sequence should animate my warrior and to add them, we're going to use a user interface as usual. So I have it right here. We can feed it the path of the level sequence in which we want to add the subsequence. Uh, we can select the start frame and end frame uh, where we want to place the section in the track. We can add a track, get the track, and remove the track, which are the three first functions we created. And then we have the fourth function that we're going to use to link our first subsequence, our second subsequence, and our third subsequence that we have right here. And if we go in the graph, we can see that it's exactly what it's doing. It's simply calling the four function we created today right here. For the first three functions, we only have to provide the path of the label sequence, and the functions are going to be able to add, get, and remove the subsequence track from the level sequence but for the fourth function we have more parameters right here because we have to first provide the path of the level sequence obviously and then the sequence that we want to link as a subsequence that sequence is decided right here just before using either my sequence one two or three which was the three sequences i showed you a little bit before that sequence is going to be fed to my functions and same thing for the two spin boxes that are going to provide the information for the start frame and end frame so now we're going to see if it works i'm going to go back in unreal right here run my editor utility widget that I have right here, scroll all the way at the bottom, and here we go. Now we can decide to, let's say, remove a track. Well, the track is not inside my level sequence, so I cannot remove it. Then I can decide to add a track. Oh, yes, I have my track right here. If I try to add it one more time, it doesn't work, obviously, because it's already there. I can get my track, which is already there, so it works. I can remove my track. Add, remove, add, remove. So that works. Then if I try to link my level sequence, so I'm going to link my sequence, it doesn't work because my track doesn't exist. I'm going to add my track back, and now I can try to link my level sequence one more time and we can see that it added my first sequence as subsequence of my level sequence and now if I press play or if I move around we can see that my wire is animated during that section because this section right here affects my wire so that's pretty good now we're going to try to add a second subsequence so I'm going to scrub let's say between the frame 53 and 93 I'm going to add a second subsequence and now my wire should change its animation to a walk animation during the second subsequence and it seemed to work that's pretty good and for the last one let's I can link it between the frame 14 and the frame 133 doesn't really matter link sequence 3 and now we can see that it added the level sequence as a subsequence that lasts between the frame 14 and the frame 133 so good it seems to work perfectly and it animates my warrior depending on all the different tracks that are inside my level sequence so that works pretty well good so i guess that's gonna be it for today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye